Tom here from Metal Loud, and it's time for another One Year Later review. This time we'll be taking a look at the Rise Against album, The Black Market. So Rise Against, much like AFI, have their roots in melodic hardcore, as they, they kind of started out with that, with a lot of politically charged songs. They, you know, infuse their the political driven message with hardcore beats and, you know, these fast guitar riffs and things like that, that kind of make hardcore what it is, and it was very well done. They kind of broke into the mainstream with their third album, uh, Siren Songs of the Counterculture, which w had enough of that hardcore sound to it, but it was still kind of very polished and marketed for a, a more mainstream audience. You had radio songs, you had, you know, definitely uh, songs that we saw on like MTV and things like that. And unfortunately, they kind of took that and ran with their kind of marketability there. Their next couple albums, really kind of started progressing more towards power punk, um, you know, that, that arena rock kind of sound. And a lot of their kind of hardcore roots were lost along the way. Their last album really kind of felt like a, a straightforward radio rock kind of album. While you can kind of sense where they came from, a lot of it felt compromised in the, the chase to marketability. It wasn't a particularly bad album, it just kind of felt flat a little bit. It, it felt uh, pre-packaged, like kind of something that everyone else was doing, that they wrote it to kind of be radio friendly and accessible. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Accessibility is great, gets you more fans and things like that. And that brings me to this album. This really does feel like a, a again, another uh, album that was written to kind of appeal to that kind of pop, power rock kind of crowd and it alienates a lot of their kind of hardcore fans that started with them. Thankfully, this album does have some classic Rise Against songs to it. There's uh, The Eco-Terrorist in Me is definitely very, very uh, much a Rise Against song. It really returns their older, aggressive sound that they had, uh, especially particularly with their first two albums. There's also the song A Beautiful Indifference, which again does very much have that aggression that is much lacking throughout the rest of the songs on this album. That said, unfortunately most of the songs on this album really don't have any bite to them, which is unfortunate because it, it kind of clashes with the message that they have. Kind of have this, you know, anti-power establishment, anti-oppression lyric uh, thing going on, but Musically, it doesn't really fit, and it kind of sounds disingenuous in a way. You know, punk music was always about kind of the counterculture movement, and this feels like it's really just trying to fit in with popular culture and things like that, so it's kind of a clashing message that it has. Now, I'm sure the sound works for a lot of people. Again, it does have a ton of accessibility. It's still got that, that hard rock feel to it. You know, there's plenty of catchy songs on here that still feel kind of aggressive enough, at least for somebody who doesn't like quite radio pop music or pop rock. But, you know, somebody's looking for something a little bit more uh, sharper on there, but not quite looking for something like hardcore punk or punk music in general. But overall, it just, it feels like a weak, weak sound. That said, as I've kind of mentioned here, you're probably going to guess, one year later, I don't really think this album started off that great, and I don't think it really holds up that much. Again, really the only song off this album I will continue to listen to is The Ego Terrorist and Me, and that's mostly because it doesn't feel like it fits with the rest of the album. It really does feel like it belongs on an older Rise Against album versus this, again, ex media accessible album that they've kind of packaged and produced for us. I mean, again, I can see people liking this album. There are some catchy songs on here. There's another song that's trying to be Swing Life Away, kind of that acoustic rock kind of sound. But when you kind of realize what the lyrics are and musically what they're doing, and you kind of realize that it's, it's clashing with each other, it, it just falls flat. It doesn't feel like that message that they're trying to drive home really works. It's definitely a listenable album. I mean, you can you can certainly sit down and listen to it. It's just really not that memorable. There's not much on this album that's really going to stick with you, and especially 365 days later, there really isn't much to take from this album.